So normally this is the overview content. Uh, we can cover all the steps like how, what kind of architecture will be there, what are the modules and how it will utilize all the things we can go ahead. As you, are you aware of like uh, what kind of uh, planning will be there? Because you know the end user, right? End user roles. So we have, uh, normally this is the process flow. What kind of a supply chain will be available in the every company? Normally mm -hmm. this is the sequence or information flow or like a order management, let's say like order management, like how from where to where the product will go, from where to where the orders, where to where the information flow, cash flow, everything will be happening. Like supply to manufacturing, it should be go to distribution, then outlet, then the customer, so there is like the supply chain will be there. So basically this APO will optimize the plan actually. So normally mm -hmm. in, the, in the standard SAP, like a standard SAP system will not have a, that kind of optimization, but APO will give us like a full-fledged optimization planning in each and every module. Like demand planning will give a accurate results for the future planning, as well as mm -hmm. SAP will give a network plan. So how, how and when, and uh, what kind of a... Uh, dates, horizon, so everything. It will give a network, horizon network planning uh, with the accurate, proper results. As well as the same yeah. thing, production planning will give optimization of how to do, when to do, okay, what are the constraints we can overcome. So all those stops will be there. GATP will have how uh, we can uh, give a promised date to the customers. So those are like a realistic uh, optimization plan will give uh, APO by using the APO we can have it so it's a purely depends on so let's mm -hmm. focus here so these are like uh i'll i'll share you the documents like you know uh let's 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 over here i'll give you that uh we have four modules yeah let's go ahead this is also not required now okay yeah so here this is like a overall uh overview and structure planning here so how we can know how business will do so what kind of a planning we'll do here? So in what way? So yeah. components, how they want to do monitor. Like normally business want to do, uh, they want to do monitor, they want to do the tactical planning, strategic planning. So how they want to do scheduling and all, everything will be coming to this APU. So by using these modules. So normally yeah. everything will be here. So how the sales plan yeah. will happen based on the production planning. So how the how we can give a promise to the customers by using the global availability to promise. So how we can uh, do the transportation or how we can achieve the fulfillment of customer orders. Those things we can uh, go ahead with the supply network plan. So all this uh, stuff we will have in it. So basically uh, we, yes. So we are having this modules. Previously, we like we had uh, like five modules over there in APO: demand planning, supply network planning, production planning, and uh, global availability to promise, as well as transportation planning and vehicle scheduling. Yeah. So in recent times, they have removed this uh, module. Like they have removed this component from the APO. So they made it like a transportation management. So the or a TMS, yeah, TM transportation, transportation management. So they have created a standalone transportation management system. So they are not using yeah. this APO part. So they are uh, implemented in a new way. So same like the APO, we will have a transport management system. So that is the secondary part. So this it's ten is it's entirely uh, like a, it made a another module for SAP actually. So TM become another big module. So right yeah. away, we have this demand planning, supply network planning, PPDES, as well as a GAT. So these are the four modules are available in APO. This is okay. what is right now. So it's yeah. Easy. Yeah. So even though yeah we you said yeah demand planning in S and P is uh, like, let's start with that one. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but my role in the company is. Uh, production planning. Okay. So okay. from that perspective, yeah, let's let's start with demand planning in S and P. But yeah, I, I mean, 
from a work perspective that's what i'm responsible for production planning okay okay and that's the third module that you are talking about so i would so rather you, are you using like a, a how like a sap pp side or apo ppd side normally like we have uh, like for example so you are understanding let me help you here so normally sap side you will have this all this module sales and distribution and uh, mm pp like that we have wm like this we have mm -hmm. normally this is a normal uh, sap like ACP, sap ecg side so but coming to sap apo we have instead of pp we will have this ppds okay instead of wm we have this ewm like that yeah. we have it normally so are you using this sap standard pp or like apo ppds yeah that's a, actually a good question uh, we and i'm relatively new to the company um, so sap ecc is there okay. so from that perspective we use sap ecc for for production planning so it might be very well the one which you are saying sap ecc um, and then we do uh, production i mean the demand planning and uh, snp in apo yeah so so uh, so right away you guys are using bp and snp snp in a yeah yeah not a pp so not a ppds only pp right so most probably yeah i'll get it confirmed mm -hmm. but yeah mo most probably because yeah all the production planners go into ecc and then they create the work orders and uh, yeah pr planned order production order Okay. And then they do an analysis of the part shortages and all that stuff, and accordingly they'll place the uh, production orders. So I think that that one is done in ECC. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got it. So in that situation, okay. So normally this this can be possible. No, uh, it's not a mandatory mandatory to use a PPDS actually because like uh, it's a high level pl planning. Most of the yeah. times, PPDS will utilize for like a bottleneck uh, products, like you know, uh, it's a very critical products, some kind of a form. Okay. It's kind of yeah. a highly cost innovative products. So those things, for those things, uh, most of, most of the companies will use uh, PPDS. If it is a, like a standard, uh, like, I don't know, like if it is a project is related to not a criticality, it's something. Yeah. It's, it's a beyond the manageable things they will utilize uh, that pp no it's a standard pp yeah that from that use. perspective you can give me an idea on what what is best uh, because the thing is right now we might not be doing the the optimal uh, scenario okay, okay. So i think there, there's a, there's a, isn't there an optimizer in ppds yes optimizer ppds will be there so yeah. there, there are like a you know planning algorithms will be there algorithms will there are like you know uh, there are a couple of algorithms like a ctm optimizer so these are the like these are like separate algorithms will be there these are separate like we can call it as a engines like planning engines we will mm -hmm. call it as a planning engines so these planning engines will help to optimize the plan so in a mm -hmm. daily basis let's see like i have a, a critical products like i need to deliver like pharma let's see like i have a pharma company like pharma project is there i need to definitely for the pharma we will have this bottleneck products because you know there will be a shelf life planning will be there definitely there will be expiration date so before the expiration date we need to deliver the customer so we need to manage how we can do the transport of in what basis so all this stuff we will go ahead with the optimizer so mm -hmm. the optimizer will give the planning like that so it's purely based yeah. on cost base so how to reduce our cost analysis and how to reduce our uh, like uh, okay. expenses for the particular product so in what way we can do the deliver, like when we can do the deliver, how can we avoid uh, all such kind of uh, 
uh, conflicts or like concerns from the pro user end or vendor. So all this stuff, not only this, so many things we'll do by using this CTM and Optimal. So apart from that, there is a standard one. Normally these things, you know, let me tell you, there will be ECC system and as well as APO system. So the CTM optimizer, we need to create out of the APU. So mm -hmm. here every time we need to give a connection. Normally this is a one-time activity. The flow will mm -hmm. be happen. ECC to APO, APO to ECC. Along with that, we have to give a connection to this profiles to APO. So this is another server. Server one as well as server two. Server three. So the connection should be there for that. So this is like a high level planning, if I say. Apart from this planning engines, we will have the standard APO planning engine called as heuristic. Yeah, we, we use heuristics. Okay, heuristics, we will use it. So that is what uh, we will do normally. Okay. So this is like a standard APO planning engine. So these are like a high level, uh, very innovative planning engines normally. So like only the biggest companies, like if I say like um, BMW, they will have this uh, PPDS. So they, they will use this optimizer. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Robert Bosch, they will use the CDM. So if something like a Ford, uh, they will use a SPP. Like it's, it's a part of uh, APO. So they will use a heuristic with SPP. So like that, like it's, a, it's, it's only depends on the business requirement and the planning. Because obviously okay. they will have a clear picture uh, when to do the delivery for the, yeah. for the customer. For that sake, definitely they need a proper production planning because car manufacturing is not a small thing. They will have a plenty of uh, part, parts are required. So for the, for each and every part, they need a planning. So they need a proper alignment with the with the delivery with the production. So due to yeah. that, definitely they will. So they will utilize this optimize. So they will utilize the CDM sometimes. So like that, it's a purely depends on the business requirement. In mm -hmm. I, I will tell you like uh, okay how how and uh, what is what and uh, what kind of uh, uh, sequence steps or uh, stages how we can uh, give an input, how we can get the uh, results for this one. So each and every part, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll explain to you no issues. So okay. these are like standard heuristic. It's a common yeah. planning engine. So it's on a daily basis. I'll tell you yeah. like what, exactly how it will be. So okay. so heuristics and all, these all are coming in SNP and PPDS. So not from the DP side. So DP like, DP is the only part we can, it will provide the future forecast. Forecast yeah. will be provided normally. So like for example, for each and every company, they require a proper planning to manufacture or to make a stock, to maintain the stock. That's mm -hmm. what, that's what every company will do. Because for, for yeah. the maintaining the stock, to avoid the fluctuations, to, avoid, uh, to fulfill the demands or especially to maintain the stock, to maintain the orders and everything. So they require a proper planning for that. So for that sake only, they will use demand planning. So demand planning will give us a, a particular level of plan, like business want next 12 months forecast the required. So they will make, we can create a, that kind of a profile, level of strategy, everything. So for mm -hmm. that, uh, DP will use. Yeah. This is like a order series. This is not the realistic data because we are taking for the only assessment. Actual planning, I mean, actual uh, production, actual confirmation will not happen in DP. Only actual things will come into S. But this is like a major one. So mm -hmm. entirely, this is not the realistic data, but this will give us a proper planning for the company because initial step with is here so then later part is snp so once we have 
actual orders like uh, you know sales orders let's see sales orders once we have the sales order or any kind of a planned order or production order like purchase requisitions so all this stuff so that part will come into snp okay so now what snp will do here so we have a sales order okay we have a sales order so now system once we have this uh, heuristic run what it will do sales order quantity is 100 let's see so now we need to deliver the, this 100 order to the customer so the heuristic will do okay it will check okay we when we have a distribution center okay in dc do we have a stock or not if stock is there that's fine 50 stock is there okay it will confirm a 50 another 50 is less so again it will go to plan it will check another 50 stock so mm -hmm. that entire sequence uh, setup process will be done by SN SN. Right. So how how we can do the planning in our entire network so anyway every company will have one network like our uh, two plants or like us plant is there India, right india plant is there in that right. we have like uh distribution centers are there dc1 uh, dc2 dc3 dc4 like that we have we have four distribution centers here us dc1 us dc2 we have these two distribution centers in that like we have like a service centers in case if we have there is a network definitely there will be a network will be there so for each and everything there will be a connection this one to right. this one this one to this one and this one to this one again like this one or this one so entirely like it's purely depends on uh business requirement let's uh, let me show you one diagram then you will understand how okay you can see here so this is one uh network diagram network network in the sense how uh, the business is having the distribution centers, plants, and how the configuration is done. So this is like, you know, so there is a two factories, three factories are there. I mean, plants, there are three distribution centers, one are service center. So like this, we will have a network connection, network uh, yeah. diagram for the every business process, every company. So that's what they will configure and in sap also we will configure like this only because we need a proper flow from one source to destination okay one mm -hmm. seo article should be transferred from plant to plant to dc so then dc to uh, service center like that we will have it so mm -hmm. this is like a uh, structure so the same structure the same kind of a structure we will have it in apo then apo will decide this heuristic planning engine will execute and decide that okay so we have a less stock in dc so then i need to raise a request to plant okay in plant if the stock is not available i'll raise a request to production planning so like that we will have a like sequence and set up the heuristic heuristic will, uh, will work like that ptm and optimizer will have a very huge function on it it's like it's purely depends on their own behavior Optimizer will do the planning based on the cost. Mm -hmm. How we can reduce our cost. So in that way, optimizer will think, CTM will think, okay. So CTM will think like uh, who is the priority of customer, who is the customer priority will take it, will take into the picture. CTM will take like that. CTM will think, okay, I need the, he, he, uh, this is like, a, here is a, he is a priority customer one, he is a priority customer two. So based on that, it will think and it will deliver the goods. So like that, it will plan. So it's, it's their own behavior. Heuristic will have a normal standard planning engine. It's, it's, it's a normal planning normally. APO will have. Okay. Remind me what, what C CTM stands for? It's a purely customer-based planning. Like for example, we have a yeah. five customers. Cust mm. one, cust to like to optimize in the customers then yeah so okay. basically so uh business knows that customer uh, two is a first priority because mm -hmm. once we have the order from this customer two this is a second priority and this is a third priority mm -hmm. okay so first of all okay so in case if we have orders from all these three customers 
so now what a ctm will check okay ctm will okay here customer 2 is a first priority of option to fulfill the demand that's what it will do now it will mm -hmm. check okay here we have a orders for 100 orders are there here even though 1000 orders are there it will not consider because our 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 intention is customer 2 is the first priority mm -hmm. so like that it will think so it will fulfill the orders even though this order came on uh, yesterday this order came on today even though it will consider that today ctm mm -hmm. planning run will happen it will think okay we have a we have a customer to is a priority so we got the 100 orders right. so we have to fulfill it this is the first mm -hmm. so like that we will have we can deliver it like okay this is the way the planning will happen here. yeah so again, okay. same thing, PPTS, if I see PPTS, normally in a PP side, we don't have a like uh, optimized planning. Like for example, uh, okay, in the particular, we have a plan. I told you that this is the plant, US plant is there. In that US plant, okay, how I need to do the planning here. Okay, at this point of time, what kind of a product, what kind of a production order I need to manufacture i need to start here so mm -hmm. that way it will think it's like a minute to minute plan. like if i say that db is like month planning will be done in a monthly wise okay monthly right. SMP in a weeks bpds okay. will come into hourly basis okay uh, yeah. bpds will plan in a hourly basis at this point of time at this point of uh, situation okay what kind of order we need to produce okay which one is the priority okay how we can do the optimization how we can maintain how we can max yeah maximize the resource resource in the sense are you are you aware of resource work center or something i mean uh wherever you are doing this manufacturing right that missionary we can call it as a, a resource okay in that particular right. resource how we can do the planning Okay, today, what are the priority orders? So how we can we fulfill the orders for the customers? That mm -hmm. is like a PPTS. It's a purely it's a right. top floor PPTS factory minute to minute planning. It will go like yeah. That. So these okay. are like PP will go, we can plan it in a monthly. SNP will work like a weekly. PPTS is purely hourly. So that's what yeah. when I come in, DP will have a like a not a high priority critical issues. Only PPDS yeah. will have a critical issues. SNP will like high priority. DP is a low priority. If mm -hmm. I see. because we can have a time to adjust, we can have a time to review all the stuff. SNP is also fine. Weekly wise, we can do that. But PPDS we need to do in an immediate manner because it will give us a production stock. Yeah. That's what uh, every company will have it. Let me let me ask you. Uh, I mean, in PPDS, is there something for? Uh, Pro, not for a regular production planner, but master production scheduler, product master scheduler. Is there something which go, gives the overall, like the high level master scheduling and then breaks it down into like smaller chunks or? Yeah, we have it, we have it. There is a concept in that PPDS itself, we, got, we are having, so we have it. Detailed scheduling board, detailed scheduling, scheduling mm -hmm. process. There are scheduling boards. Mm -hmm. We have a one, nine, one, two, three. There are three kind of a scheduling boards will be there. We have to configure in this scheduling boards. We can uh, do the planning in a particular resource level, particular order level, particular day level. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, every time we will do that so i'll show you just give me a this i'll show you the screen just to give me a moment because you will just i want to uh, help you to understand here that's what Here we have the scheduling board normally. If you see that, so this is the planning uh, scheduling board. 
you can see this. So here we have orders like this. You can see here in the particular resource we have a particular orders. Okay, these are the orders we need to work on this particular resource. So like this, we have this resource here. So I can yeah. So there are there are no couple of orders. Okay, let's see. You can see here. So okay, these are the orders. This order will contain. Okay, this schedule already it, it got scheduler schedule here so in the particular resource if i see what is this order contains okay so this this is a planned order which will contain all kind of requirements and receipts as well as the operations everything so this will come into later so once you have the sequence then you will understand so there is a quantity of manufacturing is 10 this is a product which will have a start date, end date, and how we can do this validity. So from which location, what kind of, uh, where we are manufacturing here. So all this stuff will be there. So this is what the scheduling board. This is a planning board. We will have it in a daily manner. You can see it on 14, we have this in this particular resource. Like this, we have uh -huh. one kind of situations. So each and every planning we will do here. So people right. will think like, for example, okay, this order is manufacturing on particular day, like on a 14th, okay, uh, business, I mean, production planner will think that, okay, this is a priority uh, order. So we need to do uh, before the delivery date, I mean, before uh, 14th. So then they will make a planning like that. Okay, they will move the orders from here to here somewhere based on the, depends on the availability. Okay, here some availability is there. So then I can do the planning here. So that order I can move it here and I can do the manufacturing here. So mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's a purely like entirely business requirement as well as uh, requirements will be there. The production planner uh, planning. So everything. It, everything this is there. PPDS, right? I mean, yes, the yes, screens yes. that you're showing? Yes, it's a PPDS. Okay. So PP, we don't have that kind of a process. There will be a no scheduling board, no optimization planning. Only once whatever the planned order will be there the order will be whatever the requirements are there based on the requirements the mrp run will create a planned orders the planned orders will convert the production orders simply without consideration of any kind of a resource capacity and here what will happen here this order will be allocated based on the resource capacity and the timeline and the downtime each and every constraint it will consider and it will provide the it will allocate the orders ppds will do that kind of a high level plan that's so for this to have uh, capacity planning done right which one for for this ppds we need to have i mean otherwise oh. how would the system figure that's out what we, have, we have all kind of a setup will be there that, that will be the initial setup actually so if yeah. i go ahead every resource will have a setup here Every resource will have a standard functionality, like all kind of a setup will be there. How capacity profiles will be created for the particular resource. So how the bucket planning will be happen here. So how we can have the PPDS bucket profile. So what kind of a capacity plan, any checks are there, how it will reservation will be happen if there are any downtimes or any planned yeah. downtimes, everything, every capacity things, every constraints will allocate to the resource. According to the resource sector, the PPDS will check all kind of a functionalities and it will schedule a orders here. So it will allocate. Yeah. That's what uh, PPDS will do. But PP never, it will never, PP will never do that kind of uh, things actually. Only PPDS. Okay. But you said PP is then in ECC, right? Yes, PP is in ECC. Oh, okay. It's an APO and, PPDS. It's APO PPDS. And PPDS is an APO. Okay. Yes, yes. That's what uh -huh. I, it's a high level planning normally. Uh, for the normal projects, you know, if there is no uh, criticality is not there, uh, they don't have a, like uh, so many resources. They don't have a huge uh, amount of parts. In that situation, they can use a standard PP because they don't have that much emergency. So they can do manually. Production planner will do changes in a manual way. 
that kind of a problem. But here, high level projects will definitely will implement this PGDS because they every time they will not see okay, this is a constraint for this plan, this resource. Okay, this is a bottleneck product and this is a, mm -hmm. a deliverable product. So, okay, they will not look in every time because we have a lacks of lacks of parts. So, they will not do any more manual thing. That's what they will do if your PPDS because PPDS will optimize each and every without like a, only we need to do the car setup like one time setup. Whenever do the implementation on implementation time, they will do the setup. That's it. Once the implementation yeah. is done, then again, the flow will happen automatically. So the planning will happen automatically. Only we need to review, review the analysis of all kind of results. Okay. CTP is a CTM is executed. Okay. What kind of results are populated? Whether that results will be, even though CTM will have a results, even though planner will uh, analyze the results and they will confirm it. And uh, the plan will go to shop floor activities whenever on the shop mm -hmm. floor, we will have this planning the tools based on their requirement, their tools mm -hmm. planning will be populated. All this stuff will happen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think what we do is we do demand planning SNP over there in APO, and mm -hmm. then we do ECC production planning in ECC. Okay. And we just implemented uh, GATP. Oh, so, so we do three things out of APO and one thing out of e ECC. So in ECC, what kind of uh, uh, like uh, planning they're using? Normally in GATP, we will have this uh, product allocation, uh, rule-based availability, back order processing. There are several concepts into there. It purely depends on the products normally. If it is empty or product or make to order product or make to stock product, it purely depends on those scenario. Normally, mm -hmm. GATP will have that rules. Normally, what GATP will do exactly? Okay, customer is requesting one uh, thousand quantity of some order from sales order. So mm -hmm. he is is requesting to deliver the product by thirty first of May. Mm -hmm. So now we got the sales order. Now what system will do? GATP will do. GATP will look the products like for example that sales order contain 10 products so that GATP will look okay for this 10 products the system the stock is there or not if mm -hmm. the stock is there okay it will confirm it will give the delivery date okay 31st delivery date okay we will uh, give, we are giving the assurance to give the product we will give the delivery on 31st May in case if the product is not available then it will look into other way Okay, so yeah. we need to manufacture or we need to procure or we need to purchase from the other vendor. Okay, so for that timeline, what will be the total timeline to available the product? Okay, mm -hmm. now system is thinking that, okay, we, instead of 31st May, we will uh, give an order on a 10th of June. Okay, now the system will give a promise date of 10th of June for that particular sales order. That's what the GATP will do. So in GATP, mm -hmm whatever the order is not order to fulfill the order demand so it will give a proper requested date proper delivery date it will give a like mm -hmm. GAT. so for that GATP we have this all these things product allocation product check rba rule-based availability multi-level check cdp so there are several concepts will be there yeah it, it's a business requirement because yeah it's a business requirement GATP. yeah so okay. Each and everything, GATP also, normally we will execute that availability check in ECC, but it will go to APO and it will check all the product availability and confirmation dates. It will check in APO and again, it will give a confirmation in ECC. So that's what it will work. Even PPDS also, we will sales order or a sales order will be in ECC. That sales order will move to APO. Then in APO planning will be done. The planning results will be populated, will again transfer to ECC. Thank you.